All right. Live for real this time. Sorry, family. I know it's later than we had anticipated. I was stranded on the side of the highway there for a little bit. That was exciting. I want to make sure that I get my resource here. I have discovered the wonders of eSword. If you guys don't know, eSword is a great digital software where you can have uh, Bibles, different translations, and um, commentaries and everything kind of at your disposal. So I'm going to go ahead and turn down the brightness on this so that you guys don't have to worry about seeing my reflection in my glasses. Um, hey there, it's good to see you guys. Uh, I tried doing that live earlier on the side of the road, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but it just for whatever reason, the service wasn't working, and it was... Um, it was a rough time with that. So we, we, we took that down cause it was going to be more confusion than anything. So we just, uh, we're going to, we're going to do this guys. Uh, make sure you're praying for Kevin. Trent, it's a good point. Good to see you guys. PJ. Good to see you. Jonathan. Good to see you. Julie, Jess. It looks like our scammer friend is gone uh, for asking people with money for WhatsApp or whatever. So that's good. Um, you guys have my phone number. Just text me if you see it and I'll try to sneak in there and take it down before they take it down. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, if you guys see my eyes look down tonight, it's because I have my MacBook in front of me and I have my, um, my digital Bible and commentary on here that I, I want to go through tonight. Um, obviously not like just regurgitating or copy and pasting, but using resources that I've been studying so deeply this week. And I just feel that it's really good to share with you guys. Um, so I'm excited. We have a lot of things to be excited about. And I want to talk about um, earlier today, the reason that I'm late for those of y'all that didn't see or didn't know, um, I've been working on this car for a while from this guy um, who sold it to me, just kind of a sketchy dude, uh, was misleading about documentation and different car issues and stuff. So I've been working on that. I worked on it all day, drove to get it inspected on the way home from passing inspection. The alternator died and I was stranded on the highway for about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, that's why we're late. So. We only got home about an hour and some change ago, um, and so I'm I'm feeling it. But we're here, and that's exciting, and we have a lot to be excited about. So it's great to see y'all. Yeah, don't trust anything from Houston, just for the record. Just kidding. If my friends are from Houston, it's a joke. But yes, I did buy the car from Houston. It was, it has been, it's been restored. I have to install an alternator tomorrow, which is not fun. However. Um, by and large, yeah, it was sketchy. And then I've painstakingly like the last three weeks been restoring this car. So it's going to be a nice family car. Um, and it's going to be great. So like permanently, Jess, is that where you're at? I didn't know that. That's cool. Silly bright. I absolutely think we're going home soon, but yeah. So for the record guys, I was just, I was trying to make this live stream because I felt the Lord impressing on my heart that I had been rushing all day and trying to, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Um, trying to be kind of like, you know, rushing and doing my own thing and trying to, in my own power, make this car work. And I was trying to get it registered and tagged and all this stuff. And, um, you know, I just kind of felt the Lord impress on me that there have been, there have been times in my life where I try to force things Dylan's way. Dylan's way is garbage. Don't follow Dylan's way, follow Christ's way. And the Lord used that car stopping in the middle of the road to kind of give me a moment of peace and quiet with him. Um, and that's what we did. So, uh, by we, I mean myself. My grandma came down and spent time with me on, on the side of the highway. That was nice for her. Uh, helped me get a tow truck. That was cool. So shout out to my grandma, Ellen. I don't know if she's watching. Doubt it, but she's pretty great. So I'm home, though. I didn't die. It's exciting. Then we tried again, but here we are. So, <laughs> um, But guys, I've been spending so much time in these passages, uh, and I think that there have been so many things the Lord's been pointing out to me. And um, you know, I just want to say that for the people who say that, you know, Revelation is a book to where we can't understand it or it's useless or it's 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 just so archaic and old. And why would you do that? Man, there are so many things in here um, that are relevant, that we look forward to, that we know are going to happen. And also, guys, I have been spending time looking at the works of leaders from like the 1800s, 1890s and things like that and early you know 1900s. And let me just say. It is incredible to me that these men who had not yet even seen the nation of Israel be reformed have such faith that they would. Um, and I love that. So I've been looking at like a lot of, um, you know, like John Darby's commentary. I've enjoyed it. 
Um, obviously, there are things that he gets wrong because he was alive during like the 1880s, 1890s. But overall, a lot of what we know about, um, you know, the 19th century, um, you know, pre-millennial and, and pre-tribute, a lot of that was from the first century church with Polycarp. And then we see guys like John Darby, um, you know, 100 years ago still talking about it. And that's super exciting. So, you know, we want to be on, um, you know, we want to be on guard against people who would come and try to say that, you know, this book is archaic. It's not valuable. It's, it's all, um, you know, it's, it's all rhetoric or it's all metaphor or anything like that. And guys, I want to make sure that we start off every time we go into this book with the expectation of understanding, we have had to, um, we've had to go and, you know, remove people who try to sneak in here with wolf pelts on disguising themselves as sheep trying to stir division and say, well, we can never understand this. You know, um, what are you talking about? Things like that. And it's like, you know, listen, Daniel in the book of Daniel talks about going into prophecy with the idea of understanding. We should do no less. So that's why we're here. We're excited to be here and we're excited to be able to read this, understand it and, and apply it. So we're praying for the rapture this year, but we're also excited because we have the written word of God and we see all of these things happening in Revelation that we will be seeing really soon. So, Man. All right. All right. So um, for tonight, I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Um, I have been camping out in the Young's Literal Translation from the 1800s, and I have really enjoyed it. So we're going to go on that tonight. Um, so let's, uh, let's hang. We're in Revelation verse 12 tonight, and for the record, we're mixing it up a little bit. I know we've been going New King James this whole study, but I do want to, I do really enjoy the Young's literal translation. And I'm going to spend some time in that tonight. Um, so bear with me if you guys have a Bible app, it's on there, it's free. Um, if not, follow along. They're pretty close in terms of translation, but I do like these because these tend to be more literally transliterated. So, um, Revelation 12 1, and a great sign was seen in heaven. A woman arrayed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And being with child, she doth cry out, travailing, and pain to bring forth. And there was seen another sign in heaven, and lo, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his head seven diadems. If you guys don't know, a diadem is like a crown. It's a symbol of authority, right? And his tail doth draw the third of the stars of the heaven, and he did cast them to the earth. And the dragon did stand before the woman who was about to bring forth, that when she may bring forth her child, he may devour. So we'll stop here for a second. And we want to understand that um, when we're looking at the woman and the dragon, there are so many who try to say, well, you know, the woman is the church. Well, the only problem with that is that when we look at the church being referred to, we see the church referred to as a virgin. So how would, a, you know, looking at that, it's this woman's giving birth. And unless we're looking at this as like, oh, it's Mary, then, you know, it doesn't fit. So it's universally understood. Um, it's Israel, right? And we'll go on and we'll say, we'll see more things that would lead us to believe that, right? But there are some who would try to go around and say, you know, especially in like the, the, the Catholic, I can't say words tonight, the Catholicism camp. That say no, that's that's Mary. It's not Mary. It's Israel, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and you know we're seeing these two, these two things, right? We're seeing the woman, Israel, the dragon, Satan, and it talks about the dragon. You know, it talks about the dragon. Um, you know, having these these horns and these crowns. It's really important, guys, that we understand. Um, it's really important that we understand, guys, that these are the different nations and these are all the, um, you know, these are all of the, you know, uh, what do you want to call them? Governments, empires that have come. Uh, Daniel is really important to understand when we look at this passage, especially because this is a pretty close reference to um, that passage there. It's talking about the same thing with these horns and these diadems and things of that nature. And so we're going to see, guys, that um, the child is, is the Messiah and we'll see that because we see that, you know, the child is born, Israel births Jesus. He's coming to rule. Um, and his and you're talking about him being caught up and taken with his ascension. Um, and we're going to be seeing more of that. It is important, though, that we understand, guys, that 
again, we want to make sure that we're sticking true to the text. We also want to make sure, family, that we are not being so easily influenced by those who would come in and try to stir confusion. We know that Satan is the author of confusion. And that if we read the word and we look at, um, you know, we look at the context of it, things make more sense. And I'm really big on going into this book with the idea of understanding. So, you know, we want to talk about, um, you know, we want to talk about this. And so we're seeing this image kind of being painted and we'll, and we'll continue here. And so, um, this, the dragon is waiting for this woman to give birth to her son so that he may devour him, the child, him being Christ, right? Um, and think about it, guys. When Christ was born, Satan, you know, riled Herod up to make the proclamation to try to kill all the boys uh, two years old and under. Um, we see them thinking that they won on Calvary, and obviously they didn't. And so it's awesome because we're seeing really this intense image in the cosmos Um and it's prophetic and it's, it's profound. And we see, you know, that Satan is thrown to the earth and we can reference that in, you know, Isaiah, we see that, you know, when Satan fell like lightning and we'll see that there is a certain point guys during the tribulation where Satan will lose access to the throne room. You know, the scriptures tell us that Satan stands before the throne day and night accusing us, right? Uh, the scriptures refer to him as the accuser of the brethren. And so there is going to be a point though, where he loses access to the throne room and he is thrown out for good. Um, you know, there's the initial fall, uh, falling from grace, right? And then there is there is also the final, like, no more access to the throne room for Satan and his cronies. How exciting, because the context would suggest, family, that this being, you know, at this point in the tribulation, that we're going to possibly see that. Uh, those of us who are in heaven, we might actually see this great battle unfold where this dragon is, you know, thrown out of heaven. I, for one, would love to see that, because Satan's a punk and his demons drive me crazy. They're annoying. They're a, a, a constant... Uh, harassment, right? Whether it's, uh, you know, emotionally or, or, or mentally, or it's the, the things that you hear or the things that you feel or, or whatever the deal is, right? Where these, you, But you know what it is when that voice that's not your voice and it's not the Holy Spirit comes and tries to hurl these darts at you, right? They're a pain and it's going to be exciting when they no longer have access to the throne room. It's going to be exciting. I personally will bring popcorn. You guys are invited. It's going to be a fun party. But we do see that the, the dragon's intent is, is to devour this child, right? And so we're seeing that the woman is about to give birth, and then we're going to see what happens here. It says in 12.5 that she brought forth a male child, Jesus. And he was about to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Again, we can make that connection to other passages of Messiah coming down to reign with a rod of iron. All right, we're looking at this with context. And caught away was her child unto God and his throne. Now, there are some who say this could be an image of the rapture as well and Christ calling us back, and it could be. But I look at this more of the ascension, right? The ascension post-resurrection, post those 40 days, um, going back up into heaven. So, um, and so I, I think that, you know, I think it's exciting to see this because, again, we have the, we have the benefit of hindsight. We know that Satan didn't, defeat Jesus on Calvary. We know that he wasn't killed as a baby. We know that all these things that could have um, potentially tried to thwart the plan of salvation, that you and I are benefactors of the fact that it didn't happen, that Christ did beat death. He did conquer death, right? That by believing in him and believing in his sacrifice, that we have access to that eternal life. We have access to our heavenly father. So it's exciting to see the hindsight of, you know, we know in our, in our minds and our hearts, what's you know, happen and what Christ has accomplished, but then seeing it in this kind of, you know, grand cosmic, uh, you know, scene here, it's really, it's really, it's a, it's a comfort, I would say. And now we're about to see the woman flee. So we see that the child was caught away unto God and his throne. And in verse six, it says, and the woman did flee to the wilderness where she hath a place made ready from God that there they may nourish her days, a thousand, 260. So, for 1260 days, the woman, Israel, is going to flee and have a refuge in the wilderness. You know, Obadiah talks about a city cleft in rock, and, and, and we look at these different passages. A lot of people say Petra. Um, could be. Could be. I know that guys like Tim LaHaye, Jerry Jenkins, you know, Petra. Yeah. It's, it's one of these universally understood things um, by a lot of these teachers. Could be. You know, I don't see exactly where it says, 
you know, verbatim, they will go to Petra. I say they will have a place in the wilderness so that it, it could be. And I'm sure there are, are better Old Testament scholars than me who could point out different verses that why they think that. And that's cool. I'll do a deep dive on that myself because I want to know. And maybe we'll do a video on it in the future. Um, but either way, wherever it is, they're going to have a place of refuge where they will not be able to be messed with, harassed. Their, their clothes won't wear out. They'll be they'll be provided for. You know, it's interesting to think about the fact that perhaps with if they end up going to Petra, that they would have manna from heaven like the Jews in the wilderness during the Exodus. Could be. We're postulating. We're, we're thinking out loud. Right. We're we're TOLing as bro Tooth would say. Right. And so it's interesting, though, when we look at the fact family that it says that they are going to have a place for uh, 1260 days. It's important that we look at this in the context of a 360 day month. Or I'm sorry, 360 day year. And that will be um, three and a half years. So they're going to have for the, it looks like the latter half of the tribulation, they're going to have the supernatural protection from on high. And so in 12, seven, we go down and it says that. There came a war in heaven. Michael and his messengers did war against the dragon, and the dragon did war and his messengers. So it's this, um, you know, it's this kind of, how do I say this? When when scripture repeats something, it's probably for a reason. So it's not like Satan is kicking and, and screaming by himself. No, it's, there is a, the context is there is a battle going on. There's, there's warring going on. Satan and his cronies, these demons, these fallen angels, they're fighting. And then what happens? And they did not prevail, amen. Nor was their place found any more in heaven. So they lose access here. People are asking, you know, how do you know that they lose access to the throne room? Well, it says right here, they, and nor was their place found any more in heaven. So the context would suggest, family, would connotate that there was a time where they had access. And now that point is over with by this point in the prophecy, in the, in the revelation. So it looks like on paper, that halfway through the tribulation, Satan is going to be cast down from heaven. And we'll talk more about that in the next chapter. And the great dragon was cast forth, the old serpent who is called the devil and the adversary. So make no mistake, John is clearly labeling for us that this is Satan. This dragon is Satan, right? Who is leading astray the whole world. He was cast forth to the earth and his messengers were cast forth with him. So... We're going to see from our opera glasses, as I always say, we're going to see weird stuff happen on the earth halfway through this tribulation, okay? Because not just Satan being cast out, and there are some who are like, oh, well, it's all, Satan gets cast out. And yes, that is true, but there are also all of his cronies coming with him, okay? Think about the fact that he talks, Jesus talks about Matthew 24, you know, false Christs and lying signs and wonders, right? It's possible that when Satan comes down and he tries to, um, you know, phony resurrect or or pseudo resurrect the antichrist is, and we'll talk about that in the next chapter that you know he has these little quote unquote mini messiahs or mini prophets or whatever running around performing false signs and lying wonders it's possible i'm just postulating thinking out loud there's the window don't throw any bricks okay long day don't throw bricks please i'm just thinking out loud It'd be, it's interesting to think about that because we know that at that point it will be so deceptive that if possible even the elect would be deceived so including those trib saints who are part of that group, the elect. And yet they won't be because Christ seals them, right? He he protects their, their minds from that deception. So let's keep going. 1210 says, And I heard a great voice saying in the heaven, Now did come the salvation and the power and the reign of our God and the authority of his Christ, because cast down was the accuser of our brethren, who was accusing them before our God day and night. So again, this is another direct reference to Another direct reference to um, this being Satan, the accuser of the brethren, accusing us day and night. He no longer has access. This is a proclamation of the kingdom that has been, you know, hidden, the kingdom of heaven being only in heaven, that there is a proclamation that now it is going to come to the earth. There's a transition. So it's no longer just, um, you know, this kingdom of heaven. It's also the kingdom that he's going to come up and set up and establish during the millennium. There's kind of a transition here where we see this is a proclamation of things to come. And they did overcome him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony, they did not love their life unto death. He's talking about these, uh, I believe these martyr trip saints who didn't love their life to the point of taking the mark or, or, or pledging Satan, uh, their loyalty. Rather, they, they gave their life to Christ and they didn't love it to death. I mean, they didn't love it so much. That they rejected Christ. Rather, they gave it up for Christ that they would find it in him. 
Because of this, be glad ye heavens and those in them who do tabernacle. Woe to those inhabiting the land of the sea, because the devil did go down unto you, having great wrath, knowing that he hath little time. So the fact, guys, that this is going to be something to where Satan comes down and he's more upset than he has been because he knows that his time is running short. So at this point, family, think about it. Satan knows that as soon as he... He knows for a fact that at that point when he's cast down, he's got 1,260 days to do his dirty work and then he's done so. Period. End of story. He's getting thrown into that pit after a thousand years. He gets let loose one more time. Then after that, done so. So really, really... 1260 days plus a thousand year in our in our you know he's gone he's done so so he knows that he's gone right it's not going to be something to where he comes down and he's trying to bide his time and there are some there are some uh you know cults that teach that satan is actually trying to um you know he's trying to he's trying to make it right and so he does some good thing no you see all over guys there's there's a show on amazon prime called has been hotel that tries to paint Satan is this angel of light who just God did so dirty and he just, it's dumb. Not true. The show Lucifer. Um, we're seeing this trend in the culture where they try to portray Satan as this angel of light, this good guy. And he's just not. And we know that. But we see guys in the culture that there are so many things that are trying to point him to be this good dude who was just misunderstood. It's like the people who support Hitler. He was just, he dropped, he failed art school. One thing led to another and then become a jail cell maniac. Like, no, bad dude, right? And so we see that this there's this shift to try to make him this, you know, this good looking dude. And I think that absolutely it's part of the conditioning for the time of the end, this deception. They're glorifying Satan. They're giving glory to Satan, a created being rather than the creator God. And they know it. Sorry for my lemonade echo there. I'm trying to get you the remix version. And so he has little time and he knows it. He's aware of it. Again, there is a finite amount of time that he knows 1260 days plus a thousand years. And then he's done. He's done. End of story. He's done. And he knows that you see, you might say, well, you know, a thousand years plus three, a thousand and three and a half years is a long time. Not for someone who's been around as long as he has. He knows it's a short time. Because think about it, family. If you were to get in your car and just start driving and you didn't know where you were going, but I said, hey, with no GPS, I'm going to drive from the bottom of Mexico all the way up to Canada with no GPS, with no sense of timing, no timing instruments, nothing, just you, your speedometer, and, and that's it. That would feel really long. But if you had a GPS up there and you saw that you were exactly how many hours away from your destination, that's a finite amount of time. And everyone who's taking a road trip knows that as you keep going on, you keep checking off the hours. Eventually, you go from 20 hours to 10 hours to five hours and one hour, and then it's a short amount of time. That's so that's what it's saying, right? There is a there's a finite amount of time. Right. He knows at that point, he will know that he does not have a lot of time left. So important, family, that we go in to these places of darkness with the light of the gospel and share it with earnest expectation as we've been called to do. Verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast forth to the earth, he pursued the woman who did bring forth the male. The, the, the enemy is going to go after the Jewish people. You think the Holocaust was bad? I, I reckon this might be worse because this is Satan himself, not necessarily manipulating through Hitler, but, but really, really, you know, Satan himself going after this woman who brought forth Christ, the Jews. And they were given to the woman two wings of the great eagle that she may fly to the wilderness. So there's going to be a period where, you know, uh, Israel is going to be supernaturally lifted to their location. Now, is that going to mean that there's going to be like a massive helicopter operation that's, you know, Operation Wings of the Eagle? We're flying to Petra. I don't know, right? Maybe, maybe, could be. Could it be that God sends angels and supernaturally gathers these people and, and miraculously reblips them elsewhere? Yes, possible. We know that they're going to be protected. They're going to be given a ride. And she's nourished. So food, water, clothing. For a time and times and half a time to face Oh, from the face of the serpent. 
And the serpent did cast forth after the woman out of his mouth water as a river that he may cause her to be carried away by the river. When we look at the enemy and, and metaphors with water, usually it's um, like people. So it's possible that this is going to be the Jews fleeing. And much like Pharaoh and his armies in Exodus, it could be that they're going to try to swallow them up. The land helped the woman. The land did open its mouth and did swallow up the river and the dragon did cast forth out of his mouth. So it's possible, too, that like, you know, with Pharaoh's army being swallowed up by the Red Sea, that we might see the earth open up, take all these enemy forces out, close back up. Possible. Crazy to think about, but this is a crazy time. Bima, hi. All right. The dragon was angry against the woman and went away to make war with the rest of her seed, those keeping the commands of God and having the testimony of Jesus Christ. So it's possible possible that when we look at this it could be that the i mean obviously the tribulation saints are going to be martyred we know that but it could be that the enemy goes after trip saints really hard and jews very hard right the seed and those keeping the commandment of christ obviously there's going to be jews who come to faith in jesus christ so there's going to be some overlap naturally but it is important that we know that these two groups are going to be heavily heavily warred against so that's verse i'm sorry that's chapter 12 let's go into 13 real quick It's important that we understand, guys, that when we look at the transliteration, um, we see the word beasts. It can be more closely transliterated literally into wild beasts. So Revelation 13, 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. I saw out of the sea a, a beast or a wild beast coming up, having seven heads and ten horns. Upon its horns, ten diadems, and upon its heads, a name of evil speaking. And the beast I saw was like a leopard, and its feet of as of a bear, and its mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon did give to it his power and his throne and great authority. So this kingdom, right? Um, this kingdom of Antichrist, having authority from the dragon, from Satan. People say, well, how do you know the dragon is Satan? Well, we went over that in the last chapter. And it's important that we understand that when we look at this through the lens of, of, of biblical literalism, literalism unless it says otherwise and we practice healthy hermeneutics and good hermeneutics this is less of an, uh, an amalgam of um, ambiguity like the alliteration there i know you do alliterative devices are cool rather it becomes soon that we can take these pieces and understand so we know that daniel talks about this fourth and final kingdom that's this beast this this leopardish looking beast Here's some 13.3. I'm going to read this. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to give you my personal opinion. No one's going to throw a brick through that window. Got me? You got me. We're good. I'm going to sneeze real quick, but we'll see. And I saw one of its heads as slain to death, and its deadly stroke was healed, and all the earth did wonder after the beast. So, some say... As slain to death, so it wasn't slain to death. I think the language here indicates that it's going to be a mortal wound that is going to be healed. It is going to be a pseudo false resurrection. Could it be a sword to the brain or a gunshot? Maybe. But it says there's going to be a deadly wound and that it's going to be healed. Now, when I see as slain to death, I think that maybe it was critical, but not life ending. Um, it's possible that, you know, we see a, a an indwelling like when the devil invaded Jesus Iscariot and indwelled him. Maybe we see an indwelling. I don't know. There are a lot of people who say he's going to be physically indwelled by Satan. I strongly believe that. Time will tell. But the point is, guys, that after the world, these non-believers see this, um, you know, after, I'm so sorry, I'm getting bombarded with stuff and my distraction is crazy right now. But the point is, family, that, you know, after we see this, we see that the world is going to look at this Antichrist, have his fatal wound seemingly healed and be like, we can't kill him. 
It says here in four, it says, and they did bow before the dragon who did give authority to the beast. So they're literally worshiping Satan. And they did bow before the beast, the Antichrist, saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with it? And there was given to it a mouth speaking great things and evil speakings. And there was given to it authority to make war 42 months. Yeah, Carol, that's, that's what I think as well. Um, 42 months, 1260 days, three and a half years. 36 is three years plus six is 42, three and a half years. Looking at the context of this, I'm believing this is the latter half of the tribulation as well. There are some who get really, really, really wound up and say, I know the proper time. But I look at this in its literal sense and I say, look, this appears to be the timeline. No bricks, no windows. Deal with it. All right, moving on. And it did open its mouth for evil speaking toward God to speak evil of his name and of his tabernacle and those who in the heaven tabernacle. Pardon me. So this horn is, is, is you know, blasphemy. We're looking at um, huh. yeah, it's a really interesting view about that. I'll look into that. I didn't know that. I, I yeah, I there are some who look at the beast as like the, the papacy and, and that kind of thing. I don't know. Um, true seer, good to see you, brother. Can't really good to see you. Um, but you know, we're going to look at this this wound being healed as like a who can make war with them because they tried to kill him and they couldn't. That's how I look at it personally. And the sound of shattering glass not appearing is a good sign. And we see that he's speaking blasphemy against God and against those who are tabernacling in heaven. Saints. And he was given authority to make war with the saints and to overcome them. I have a fan on Jonathan, but also we have a lot of witchcraft going on here. It would not surprise me if there was some spooky, weird stuff going on. Just for the record. I, I picked up a sense for it when it starts to get wild. So if uh, anything flies to the back of my head, you guys will see it and I'll be vindicated as not a crazy person. Uh, it has been a very intense day of spiritual warfare in the Ethington family. So pray for us, please. And there was given to it, to the beast, the authority to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And he's given authority over every tribe, tongue, and nation. This is um, this is a very clear indication that it's going to be like what Daniel talks about, where this kingdom destroys everything and tramples under all of it. There is absolute control for a time. And he's going to make war with the saints, the tribulation saints, and overcome them. They're going to lose their heads to the guillotine, as we'll see in a little bit. And bow before it shall all who dwell upon the land whose names have not been written in the scroll of the Lamb, the life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, the Lamb's book of life. It's basically, guys, the Lamb's book of life, you know, we're looking at um, those of us who are uh, accepted Christ as, as Lord and Savior and, and how we, um, you know, we're written in Jesus' book. Our names are there, Lamb's book of life. The people who are not, they're the earth dwellers who are worshiping Satan. 39, if anyone hath an ear, let him hear. If anyone in captivity doth gather, into captivity he doth go away. If anyone by sword doth kill, it behoveth of him by sword to be killed. Here is the endurance and the faith of all the saints. All right. So we're seeing that this is going to be a time unlike any other, and we're going to see that there are people dying by the sword. Um, you know, I mean, I can imagine, guys, I mean, think about when, like, the Gestapo would go and raid homes of people trying to look for uh, Jews in hiding, it's probably going to happen like that. And if I seem subdued, I'm sorry. I was working on that car all day and it took it out of me. So um, we will be finishing up here in a moment. We'll pray and then we'll get out of here. Okay. God bless you guys for coming. I appreciate you. Just want to let y'all know I love you. We're going to finish this. And I am so grateful y'all to be able to have brothers and sisters like you guys. Because on rough days like today, y'all keep me going. And I love that. Revelation 13, 11 says this. And I saw another beast coming up out of the land and it had two horns like a lamb and it was speaking as a dragon. 
All the authority of the first beast doth it do before it, and it maketh the land and those dwelling in it that they shall bow before the first beast whose deadly stroke was healed. So this false prophet is going to make people bow before the Antichrist. And it doth great signs that fire also it may make to come down from the heaven to the earth before men. So he's going to have this lying sign and false wonder, this power of Satan to call down fire from heaven. It is a bastardization of Elijah and of the, the witness from before. We saw two witnesses having that ability. It's a bastardization. Make no mistake. It is an attempt to make a crappy counterfeit. Pardon my word choice there. But man, <laughs> I get so frustrated because, you know, people, people don't understand. And pardon me for the word choice. I want to say something real quick that I feel led to say, though especially on the topic of, of witchcraft and stuff like that. The people who are like, you're a fool if you think dark magic exists. Listen, listen. When you go out to Africa and those witch doctors doing their thing and they get results, but they're demonic results, that's the power of Satan. Satan has power? Yes, some. Obviously not as much as the Lord. Not by a long shot, but enough to have false signs and lying wonders. Absolutely. It's absolutely real. My frustration is a lot of the times the people in the church, especially, who say that that stuff doesn't happen anymore. Nope, that was just in the Bible times. Demons don't possess people. Generational curses aren't a thing. And witchcraft is, is, is just not true. That's, that's what the enemy wants you to think. If I were the enemy, you know what I would do? I would make sure you didn't believe in me because if you didn't believe me, I could do whatever the heck I wanted to you because you don't believe in me. You're not looking. Crazy, but true. And the problem is, family, is that too many times we see believers, especially, who deny that Satan has any dominion, which is silly because he is literally the prince of the power of the air. The Bible is clear on that for a time and now, right? Make no mistake. They're the people who are, you know, trying to, um, you know, the fact that we're looking at so many things, guys, witchcraft, demon possessions, all this stuff off the charts. If you guys watched JD's video from like three weeks ago, that lady was demon possessed. When JD walks off the stage, you hear him command it, come out of her. That still happens today. I'm pleading the blood of Jesus over every doorpost in my home most nights. Because we live in a witchcraft-infested neighborhood. People are literally trying to curse things. We don't accept gifts from neighbors because I'm convinced that one of them is a witch who tried to curse some stuff. It's crazy. But it doesn't happen. Of course it happens. Let me share a testimony with you briefly, and then we'll get back to our study. Okay? We live in a very witch witch witchcraft-infested area. Okay? We tried to move into a new house, got defrauded. It's a whole long story, but long story short, we're stuck here for a little bit. Not ideal, but the Lord has us here. We've been praying for neighbors and doing some spiritual warfare. Two things, and then we'll go back to our study. Number one, number one, when I was in my kitchen late one night, we have a thing of knives on top of the fridge. I literally had knives flying out of the block and spinning that and trying to get my head. That doesn't happen, right? That's not real. Obviously, it was a draft that picked up this, this heavy knife and flew. That's crazy. I had cabinets fly open and smack me in the face, and I had a thing of dish soap like this big that sitting vertical flip and try to hit me in the face. But that doesn't happen. There's a dumpster behind me down yonder this way. Where behind it, guys, is the forest. They literally will perform satanic rituals and sacrifice animals. And it's demon infested. And you can see these spooky little outlines and you can smell the sulfur and you can feel them breathing on your neck the whole nine yards. And you're going over there and you're casting them out in the name of Jesus. That stuff happens today. It does. It does. So for people to say, well, that stuff doesn't happen anymore. That's simply not true. And it's not scriptural. So if that's, you know, your view, I challenge you to go read your Bible and tell me. Where it says that doesn't happen today. It doesn't. It doesn't. All kinds of weird stuff is going on. The devil knows that his time is short. He knows that we're 
you know, he knows that it's going to be soon that we're flying and that he's got his little short little leash. The irony family is that God basically turns over the earth to Satan when he pulls the restrainer away and says, okay, for seven years, you try to do it and he can't produce anything but bad. You want to know why? Because he's not God. Surprise. It's crazy. It's crazy. Satan's whole thing is in his arrogance. He says, I want to be like the most high. I want to be above the most high. I can do it better. God gives him say, okay, man, seven years, go for it. Not a thing. Not a thing. Crazy. Let me get off my soapbox real quick. We'll finish this study. So this false prophet absolutely has demonic power. We established that, amen? Because it still happens. It's not a storybook. The Bible is not a storybook. It's history. And our history tells us about demons and witchcrafts and all these things and divination. It's history. So they'll have satanic power. He's going to call fire down from heaven that it may make to come down from the heaven to the earth before men. And it leadeth astray those dwelling on the land because of the signs that were given to it to do before the beast. Forgive me, but when the restrainer gets removed, literally all hell breaks loose. Family, do we understand that? Have we ever like thought about that? How much evil and garbage is there now when he's holding it back? That when he decides he's going to Step out of the way. It's going to make horror movies look like kids' movies. Family, it's going to get wild. And I bet you those people then are going to be like, oh, maybe there is some satanic demonic power going on. Oh, maybe. Oh. Sorry, but it frustrates me when people look at the Bible and they don't take it seriously because there are so many things in there that we need an awareness, of protection, all this. Saying to those who dwell upon the land to make an image of the beast that hath the stroke of the sword and did live. So he's saying, look, we're going to make an image of the Antichrist who falsely resurrected. There was given to it a spirit to the image of the beast. Now I look at this and I think that one of two things can happen. It could be AI and a false, you know, sense of omnipresence. Or it could be these, these demons that are inhabiting these different images and trying to make it a likeness, have a likeness to it and a deception. Either way, it's smoke and mirrors. And it's going to make it speak. And then it may cause as many as shall not bow before the image of the beast, they may be killed. And it maketh all, the small and the great and the rich and the poor, and the freemen and the servants, that it may give them a mark upon their right hand or upon their foreheads. We have to understand a couple of things. Okay? We have to understand a couple of things. Firstly, there is this assumption, and it's a false assumption, that anyone who does not take the mark is a believer. Not true. There are going to be non-believers who refuse the mark and end up in hell. Okay? Also, the false prophet is going to compel these people to take the mark. When they take it, it is absolutely an allegiance to Satan. Verse 17 says this. Then no one will be able to buy or sell except he who is having the, the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So could these be options perhaps? Maybe. Do you want Antichrist? Do you want the number of Antichrist? What do you want? we got options. How about a tasteful image of a dragon? Perhaps. Hmm. No, of course not. Right? Not for us. Not for the believers. 
but there are going to be people who are lining up to take this thing. You can't buy or sell without this thing. Sounds a lot like biometric payments to me. No. Amazon Fresh using your palm, Whole Foods. You think that's not conditioning for the mark? But it's so convenient. Yeah, we need to get it or we're going to be beheaded, but it's better than Apple Pay. Okay. It's going to happen. Here is wisdom. He who is having the understanding, let him count the number of the beast for the number of a man it is, and in the number is 666. <coughs> Pardon me. Pardon me. I've been under a car all day, so I'm a little, little raspy. It's a little smelly under there with all the fumes. Um, but it's going to happen. And it shouldn't shock us because the Bible says it's going to happen. So they're going to be pledging allegiance to Satan. And there's also going to be people who are just wanting it to be the convenient thing. If, they, if, if you don't know the word of God and if you don't know Christ, you should be frightened when you see these things happen. But if we know Christ, we know it just means that we're that much sooner. I am firmly, firmly... As firm as a ripe bone in carrot. That the system is already in place. We're just waiting. We're just waiting to be raptured so they can flip their switch. And there you go. I went to Sam's Club the other day. They've erected these weird arch things. And they scan your stuff. And they take the money out of your Sam's card and you're good to go. Even if you've already scanned your stuff in the scan and go, they still have that extra layer of surveillance. You can't even go to a dollar store or a Target now without them all of a sudden just letting you know that they're recording you as you're doing all your things. But it's thousands of years off and Jesus isn't coming anytime soon. Psych! When someone starts saying something silly like that, you just start showing them what's happening in real time. Because make no mistake, the restrainer is holding, but eventually he's going to this and get out of the way. Our job is to share the gospel. Earnestly, with expectation. People are like, no one wants to hear the gospel. The first century church had the hardest time in the world. Paganism, sexual promiscuity, sexual idolatry, sexual worship for some of these pagan cults. Beheadings, getting burned alive, crucified, and they still shared it with expectation. The problem with today is that in the first century church, there is a noticeable, discernible change from someone who claimed Christ and someone who was a pagan. To the point that it was so desirable, Christ, they would say, sir, what must I do to be saved? The problem is, family, is that now, by and large, a lot of people who claim Christ look the same, if not worse, than people who don't claim Christ. We're called to live differently. All right? It's crazy. Because so many people want Jesus to save them, but not to be their Lord. He's Lord and Savior. We do what he says because he knows better. We follow his commands because we love him. And because he says, my sheep hear me and follow my commands. And he saves us. Freedom from the bondage of impulsive, reckless sin. Free, set free through Christ. It's crazy. Crazy. So, look up. Stay in your Bible. Don't listen to crazy people on TikTok or YouTube or whoever. I know I looked shoveled, but we read out of our Bibles tonight. You can fact check me on it, all right? But listen, I love you guys. Share the gospel, please, when this video posts. Don't do it right now, please, because I have two reasons for it. Number one, lots of folks don't go through the live chats. They won't know if you have left ones. 
who you're worried about getting left behind to pray for, they won't see this potentially. Number two, when we wait to post until after the video posts on the page and you put it in the actual comment section, more engagement, the message gets spread further. I appreciate it. We're coming back after having some major technical difficulties after a while. So we've, you know, we've been having a hard time with, you know, people getting upset and leaving or reporting or whatever. So please just help combat that by just sharing it, liking it, all the things. We appreciate it. We are going to be, um, we are going to be meeting again tomorrow evening at some point to talk about things that are happening in the world, especially in the Middle East, and why we think that Christ could be coming back sooner rather than later. Oh, dude, Jonathan, so bad. My pastime is almost dying on the way to and from work. Yeah. And I drove by your neck of the woods a little bit ago, and it was pretty rough over there, too. So. All right, but listen, God bless you guys. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. All right, may he show favor to you and be faithful to you, all right? Love you guys. We'll talk soon. Thanks for being with me. I am sleep deprived and under a car most of the day, and I appreciate you all hanging out with me so late tonight, all right? God bless you. Have a great night. Jesus loves you. Jesus protects you. And Jesus is coming soon. Good night.